That's it. We're live. We're direct. We're all locked back in. Welcome back to another episode of Property by Kazi or Someone Else. Each and every week we speak to a property developer, investor or industry professional and we speak all about property for anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. Every week we have a special guest and this week is no different. Today we're going to have Lorraine Thomas in the building with us talking all about her development journey over the last couple of years. Um, for those that don't know, we're now available on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon and everywhere else, YouTube. So make sure you're following the Property by Kazi pages if you want to listen to it on your drive to work. If you want to listen, you know, while you're at work, little sneaky, sneaky AirPod in, let me know. But without further ado, let me find and add in my guest to get some amazing value. Always appreciate all the regulars that I see. Ali Riz. Ah, oh, how are we? How are we? Hello, I'm fine. How are you? I'm not too bad, thank you. See, you came in so smoothly. You said you hadn't done one of these before, but you just, ta-da, and popped up perfectly. Here I appear. Thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you. We are very glad to have you on. And I do say, I say, look, we've done it now 18 of these, I think. <laughs> uh 18 of these averaging just under an hour i'd say you know we're literally on hundreds of hours worth of expertise that we've spoken about from everybody that i've spoken to you included um so if you're not make sure you're following myself make sure you're following lorraine because our page is amazing and we're going to talk about all the great value that you can get from that once you engage and interact with her um so i know you because you know you've been doing developments in the same neck of the wood as me i've come across you on instagram and whenever I do find an amazing page like yourself, obviously I just want to highlight it and give other people the opportunity to get some great value with all the great things you've been sharing. Um, so to give you a little overview, she is a developer in the full sense of the word, proper developments, you know, proper ground up stuff. I think you've got a project really around the corner from me in Thornton Heath at the moment, if I'm right. That is how many, uni how many units is that? Yeah, so it's nine units, it's two houses and seven flats. Nice, nice, nice. We're going to talk about that in more detail. But, um, you know, I've seen that you've been featured on the BBC, on the Independent, loads of good accolades to confirm that, you know, this is somebody that's actually saying they're doing what they're saying and saying what they're doing and vice versa. But I'd love you to actually give a little bit of background to the people that don't already know you about your journey, what you're currently up to and, you know, how you got there. Well, uh, I'm Lorraine Thomas, as you know, and um, I didn't I, I didn't set out to have a career in uh, in property at all. And it was actually um, through my dad becoming ill that I, I fell into property. And I always like to say I kind of fell into it because uh, I didn't set it set out to do it. Um, I was working in law firms, in, in uh, business development in the city. And when dad became ill, I just thought I, I should give back to him. Gave up my job thinking, Oh, how am I going to manage? How am I going to pay my bills? Um, but this little voice in my head said, it will be all right. And it was. Um, I received an email from a friend um, who is now my business partner. And um, she said, I need somebody to come and find accommodation for me um, for these young adults that are looked after by the borough. Um, and her business is called Step Ahead. And it's quite a large, well, largish sized business. And she mm -hmm. works with them. Authorities. So um, I jumped at the chance um, and responded to the email saying, yes, yes, I'll do that. But the email wasn't meant for me. It was meant for another Lorraine. But that's a whole other story. Um, and but Can I just, 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 just stop you there yeah. quickly? This is what we spoke about this last week. And I'm going to speak about it again. Like, If you don't put yourself in a position to capitalise on your blessings, you won't receive them. Like, You have to be proactive. Like, So it wasn't meant for you. You responded. And it made sure that you put yourself in a position to be able to capitalize. So I think a lot of the time people underestimate the importance of luck in success, but luck doesn't take away from your graft. You put yourself in a position to achieve that luck. Absolutely. But go on, continue. But I like to just butt in when I hear something, yeah. I'm like, we need You're to right. talk about that. 
you're absolutely right sometimes we're giving things and blessings in our way and we we it goes over our head because we don't actually realize it's a blessing um so yeah grab hold of the opportunity i did um and i realized... you're lucky you're a lorraine rather than a kazim more likely to get the accidental email <laughs> yeah well um so basically um i was pleading with landlords to rent me the accommodation north london east south west and the accommodation actually wasn't that good and because um it was a company let very very different to the tie-in to a, a normal residential um landlord setup they were wanting three months six months in advance just to secure um the property and it weren't all that great and i thought we could do better so Dolores and I took ourselves off to auction. We got it all wrong, Kazim. I mean, literally, we did made so many mistakes. I could I could do a whole episode on the mistakes for auction. Um, but now we've been back a few times. We're we're learning. We're still. I always say. We're how, still how long ago was it when you went to when you first went to auction? Two thousand and seventeen. Okay, so still relatively, you know, yeah, relatively recently. Yeah, long ago. Um, but in that, over the last kind of three, four years, we've learned so much. Um, and I, I've, I look back at a video, and I know it's 2017 because we we're at auction and they caught us on the reel, and somebody went, "Is that you at that auction?" So um, yeah, I know it was 2017, um, and that's when our journey started. So we started at auction. We're now mm -hmm. developing ground up. We've got a few rentals. Um, We've got a, set of, um, a couple of HMOs and we're, you know, we're making really good, good progress. And the aim is to, um, I say that we're, we're landlords with a social conscience. Um, yeah. and, do you want to stop me? No, 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 no. Do you know what? I was actually just pulling up some, I was pulling up your page in the background because I wanted to touch on the social concert stuff, but I was just making a note because a few things you said, and I wanted to not let any of them slip, any of these little gems that you're dropping. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> Basically, um, why I say a landlord with a social conscience, I'm on a mission to create a whole new breed of landlords that actually put people before profit. And that comes from what I've seen trying to, to rent. Um, and, and I think sometimes, you know, People, I may be challenged on this, and, and oftentimes I talk about it, and I go, they go, well, how can you put people before profit? Because you can. Because, you know, what you might make on some other project, you can then, the, the profit is in the what you're giving back, and the do, that's where you get, that's where you get the, you know, what I call the profit. It's not in monetary terms, but it's in, call it blessings, if you will. Um, I had this conversation with somebody recently and they were they were talking about the lack of either social housing or the lack of affordable housing. And they were saying, look, the government has obviously failed to deliver on it successfully. And that's because they don't really work to the same metrics and, you know, tight profit numbers and things like that that potentially an individual developer would. And they said, look, I think that's a really good opportunity for you to step in. And my response, which is probably maybe the opposite to your view, was like, look, it's something... The potential I'd love to get involved in, yeah. but I'm not a philanthropist. So at, at what point, if I'm getting involved in something that I know has a really good end goal in terms of affordable housing, but I still need to make money to keep the roof over my own head, at what point do you... Because I think there's always going to be somebody that says you're making too much money. You know, you should have gave more. But then there's also going to be always going to be somebody that's like, you should have taken more money because you've given enough. And I think for me, that's why I kind of like stuff like this, where it's just give. And then when I'm doing developments and X, Y, or Z, that I know what I'm doing it for and almost compartmentalise the social element of being a developer, if that makes sense. Yeah. And, you know, you on something, I mean, we could do a whole 30 minutes on this, if not more. Like, are we just going to be a new tag team, like, like Bellboy and Rodney or Batman and Robin, <laughs> just back and forth? Honestly, to talk about the stuff I really want to cover, we need another four episodes because what you touched on was so fundamental to purpose and it, it breaks down in two things. So 
you're saying that as a developer and you're a successful one and you're you know you just have to look at your instagram look at your following look at people want to hear what you've got to say so you're saying that i make money i am you know i make a profit by doing what i do but mm. i am social in that i give back like now where yeah. i'm sharing with my followers for free experience right so that's another yeah. way of, of actually giving back and i get that and if that's your thing that's your thing and i i love it and i love people that you know want to do more of that for me my thing is when my parents came to this country somebody gave them a chance you know if you remember way back when when they said no blacks no dogs no irish yeah. and it was like a struggle and i and I, I don't want it to be cliched, but I always say it. I want to be that person today. So I know that there are people out there that if you give them a roof over their head, they will do wonderful things. My parents did it. My grandparents did it. Other people's parents have done it. All they needed was that roof over their head and someone to give them a chance. And they may not tick all the boxes. See, this is the issue. This is the problem. Because... If you think about it, you know, nowadays you need three months. Uh, I don't know what the standard so that, is. So, so criteria, to give you an example, a lot of the time to be able to rent, yeah. you need anywhere from four to six weeks as your deposit. In terms of an income, if you're a so, like the sole income owner, you need to earn 30 times the um, the monthly rent effectively is the, the rough parameters that most referencing companies use. There you go. And you know that a number of people who are either asylum seekers or they've just come in or they're trying to make or somebody's got them or they're trying to make ends meet or they just haven't got it. And they're working four jobs or whatever the case is. They're not passing no credit check. They're doing this. They're not ticking them boxes. So landlords are going to go, uh uh, the computer says no. But we are and I would like to encourage more people to be in the space of you know that you can give something. You see, I take it back again. My dad used to rent when he finally got on the ladder, saving and drawing the partner and, made, and, and then he finally bought somewhere. He rented out rooms to people that he knew had nowhere else to live. And they couldn't get it because they just, like what I'm doing now, didn't tick the boxes. So he gave them a chance. These people have gone on to own their own houses, do amazing things they just needed a chance and that's all i'm saying not everyone can afford to do it it's my thing like this is your thing yeah. and it's my way of saying you know what i'm going to help another i know that you may sting me but i pray that you don't because the thing is the understanding between us is that unspoken word of i'm giving you a chance I know you didn't pass the credit check. I know you didn't give me the right deposit. And I know that you can't, you haven't even got the sheets for the bed, but I'm giving you a chance to do wonderful things because I know that you will do. And it's just that trust. Um, I think that, yeah. that, that is really, really good because I even, yeah, even in terms of like personal portfolio or viewing, you know, I still do a lot of my viewings and it's because as a the benefit of self-managing as a private landlord, yeah. is you can make decisions based on a gut instinct that, yeah. you know what I mean? You said you don't have the deposit, but, you know, I, I believe what you're saying. I believe the story or I believe in yeah. you or, you know, I've just sometimes just the energy. You meet somebody, you have a conversation and you're not really worried what they're going to say afterwards because from that, and, and the funniest thing is some yeah. tenants that like maybe hit the income threshold times a hundred, I will know from day one, I'm never renting to you because I can, every person I've always got against my gut Double, yeah. it's always, you know, so it's not, I think we do live in a very metric, you know, numbers, do you tick the boxes world. So I think yeah. it is good that you're disturbing. So are all of your developments focused on um, working with those same schemes to provide? So it's, 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 a, it's a mishmash. Um, mm -hmm. So the ground up, development is on help to buy so that's all about getting first-time buyers onto the ladder so that 40 percent equity that you can get from homes england and live aspire to live in somewhere that's shiny new brand new built for you mm -hmm. um, and it tends to be um first time 
buyer, so younger. I think, yeah, I think, it, I think you have to be a first time buyer for well, the current scheme. Thing. Last year, you didn't have to be a first time buyer, and not a lot of people knew that. It's only since April the law yeah. came that you have to they, be a first time buyer to get help to buy, but before you didn't need it, and not they've, many act they've actually extended it because the, the, the help to buy part two was supposed mm. to end in April. Mm. But because of COVID and everything, it didn't. So I think it might have ended now, but I know it was, it might be till the end of July. You can still buy if you're not tired well, because you're on the old, it depends what scheme exactly the property is on because some exactly. people have registered for the old scheme. That's it. So it's all to do with the scheme. And so my scheme is now on the new scheme. The new help to buy. Right. So the new help to buy says you have to be a first time buyer mm -hmm. and you have to live in that property so you yes. can't go oh i'm gonna buy it but i'm actually gonna stay at my mum and dad you you actually yeah. have to live in it and um you can't sort of sub rent it out uh, for want of a better word mm -hmm. so part of the business deals with getting people onto the ladder because it's really important that we do that get young people onto the ladder and the other thing is i'm really into um into local people you know so mm -hmm. Uh, a couple of agents have said to me, Lorraine, we could get this sold for you with um, uh, overseas overseas people wanting London properties. And I'm like, no, I want to sell to people, local people or in and around. Um, existing community. London. Exactly. That can't afford to live in. You know, the people that are going to buy at my development are people that are probably looking around maybe Clapham, um, Brixton, Hearn Hill, uh, all those outer sort of, you know, Dulwich, but they mm -hmm. haven't got the money for that. So they come down to Thornton Heath first. And once they've done Thornton Heath, then they can aspire to move somewhere, somewhere else. And so I'm all about local people getting onto the ladder. That's the first strand of so, it. To, to play devil's advocate slightly with, with yeah. Help to Buy it, because I've, used, I've not used the new version, but right. I've used the older version. And, you know, in developer circles, um, I don't know if you've come across this, but some developers will call help to buy, help to sell. Because in actual fact, as a developer, help to buy potentially creates a premium on the properties themselves that you can sell them for. Now, with, with anything that's new, you generally get a premium. But I think particularly with help to buy, because it creates further access to properties that potentially you couldn't buy because of, the assistance with the deposit and the help element yeah. that, you know, there's a lot more demand because there's not a much, as much of them. Naturally, higher demand with reduced yeah. supply means prices go up. So where, where, where do you sit in regards to that and how do you sort of help to combat that? So, so I wouldn't say I would like to help to combat it because it, you make a very valid uh, point. And actually me and you could bat, bat and ball on each subject for, you know, for 12 I mean, weeks, to be fair, right? sometimes I just, I'm just, I'm just playing right. devil's advocate, and sometimes no, I completely no, no, I agree. Love it. I love it. So here's my point in it, right? So the thing about it is that if you're, if you consider that, say, a three hundred thousand pound unit, you're mm -hmm. going to get one hundred and forty thousand of that with, um, with uh, Homes England uh, equity funding. You mm -hmm. do not have to pay that back for five years. And then when you do pay it back, you are paying it at some ridiculous rate of like 2% or something. It's really small. Yeah, it's, it's just cheap. Yeah, yeah. When, you, when, you're, when you actually do pay it back. So in that time, it's given you a chance to only pay for the mortgage bit of it, which will be the other 160,000, say, that you've had to get a mortgage on. But you'll be paying for that mortgage. You'll be able to get a really good first time buyer's rate because the government are trying to get people onto the ladder. So there's bound to be some kind of lender out there. And I know it's difficult. And I don't say this blinkered and, and flippantly, but there's bound to be someone who is going to rate, um, lend to you at a really good rate. Now, what you're saying to me is, Lorraine, but doesn't that, isn't that a just, just a, position against you're saying you want people to get on the ladder but it's actually more expensive to buy a new build than it is to buy 
a normal one bedroom flat mm -hmm. or two bedroom flat yes but the point is once you've bought it it's going to go up in value as well and by the time you start to pay back that equity lending you know you're probably more likely your job position may have changed your home life may have changed so things might have changed for you so that you're in a position that you can afford to do that so in my in my mind um it's worth paying that little bit extra. Yes, it does help me, the developer, because obviously it's set at a, a, a different price. But you and I both know development ground up is expensive. And sometimes mm -hmm. you, you can do two years. We talked about this before. That's why I told you that I run away from it. And I just and stick with my conversion. <laughs> so small. People think you're a billionaire. But actually, by the time you've paid out all the construction, all the yeah. legal, the council seal on its own you know there's yeah. a lot involved talk, talk, talk a lot less if you get involved in affordable housing the section 106 <laughs> so yeah. you know, that is why come on it's it's horses for i know I, I completely i just wanted to hear your take on it because yeah. like i said from a developer standpoint i'm yeah. like Do you know what this is great it means that i've got an extra pool of people to sell to potentially can sell it you know yeah. higher and it is it's like the same thing of if I told you you can have a brand new car, you're going to pay more money that, than it considerably more than if it was even just X display just because it's brand new. Yeah. I think the point that you touched on is very important that the old saying of like a bird in your hand is better than two in the sky. And that if you can buy a property now at today's rates, because people always ask me, when do you think is a good time to buy a property? And my answer generally is always now because. Yeah. You can look at things, you know, from afar out and say, OK, prices yeah. might go up, down a little bit. But long term, particularly yeah. in London, prices go up. So I, I completely understand the argument. And because you need to keep the property for a certain amount of time, it does make sense. I just think in terms of financial literacy, if yeah. you don't have to use help to buy, you should consider your options. But if yeah. you, you know, if you're not going to be able to buy for the next five years without using it, then it's probably going to be a really good way for you to get a foothold on the ladder or just have stability to know that you're not at the beck and call of a landlord or somebody else and you have, you know, your own space, that's yours. Yeah, and you make a really valid point. And um, everybody's circumstance is going to be, is going to be different right but there are people that really cannot get onto the property ladder without that help to buy and so for them it's like win-win so um back to your question which is um what does uh, yeah, second, what's the view for my so so there's the development bit which is all about the you know getting people first time buyers on and yeah. then there's um there's a mentoring program that i run as well and um actually i think it's one of my they're gonna love this because i answer the question 30 times a day do you mentor and it's yeah. always unfortunately not maybe next year so everyone asked that question you see lorraine go <laughs> find her <laughs> Right, Lorraine's got a little caveat. So, um, actually, I'm going to just big up Melvin because I think it's uh, Melvin reached out to you as well and said, "Oh, look, you know, uh, talk to Lorraine." Um, so, just just on that point of mentorship. So, the program I run is View from My Window. is about viewing. It's about dreaming. It's about aspiring to own because there is a distinct difference in the UK if you own to if you don't own the rest of the Europe the rest of Europe have a culture of um of of renting right mm -hmm. and um ever since Brexit it seems like more and more of the UK is going in that direction as well and I I say that I know the difference between what being do you think about that actually sorry like what do you think about because I've heard a lot of arguments for and against ownership versus you know what, what's your in, in, like the just thing is, from a top level I, I top level is own because owning puts you in a different league to not owning it's as simple as that then then if you want me can to I, talk it, can I, I can, can, can I dispute it I, I, I'm literally <laughs> saying own because it puts you in a different position to somebody that doesn't own. Yes, it may well be that you've had to fight, beg, borrow and steal for that 30K. I don't know how much deposits are on that 30, 40K deposit. But uh -huh. in the long term, 
it's the bricks and mortar that's going to be your stability. You know, people will lend, look at you different. The financial world will look at you differently because you've got the bricks and mortar. A whole host of things will open up for you because you own bricks and mortar. And many may say, right, I'm going to challenge that because it could be a rope around your neck. It could be, but it's actually a better rope to have around your neck than to rent. And actually rent be more let, costly. Let you me know? give you some um, arguments for the other side. Yeah, potentially but... you can either debunk or, you know, or just dispute. So yeah. in, particularly with uh, millennials and Generation Z, there's a, an attitude towards the use of products so we no longer buy CDs. We just use Apple and we rent the music effectively for a subscription. We Not no longer pay, pardon? Yeah, Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, all that good stuff. Your favorite DSP, where you can also find this podcast live and direct from Eva Kazi each and every Sunday, 6 p.m. on all amazing Love DSPs. You. Love you. Big plug. Um, but yeah, so again, they'd rather... Um, you know, rent their music yeah. in terms of their car. They'd rather have an Uber product rather than, um, you know, say, I'm going to buy a car. And I think the rationale behind it, which one thing I think is amazing about this generation, is it's almost like generation entrepreneur in that a lot of people are going out there to get it and get it independently. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, I always say, don't there's no one size fits all when it comes to investment. So I'm a property person. I'm going to tell you to buy a house and I'm saying this stuff to like, you know, to play the other side of the argument. However, I do understand if you're an amazing like entrepreneur or, you know, you're a creator or you're doing something and you've got that 30,000 potentially in terms of use of capital, investing that in yourself or in your business could be a way better investment than property. But it just depends on circumstance. And that's the only thing I would say as a kind of caveat to always buy a house because do consider your position as well. Would that be my personal kind of response? Yes. And, and I would say, um, I'm not going to agree with you, but I'm not going to disagree with you. And the reason it is... Because... Oh, she's on the fence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you know why? Because I could open up, seriously, a whole bag of worms on this just one subject because it's deep. And there's a lot of, you know, I could come back at you with so many more responses. But the one that you, I, I want to get to this kind of uh, the question that you asked me about six yeah. questions ago. <laughs> I haven't finished it. Yeah, um, I'll wind it back. Wind it back in. <laughs> so so I, I was, I'm going to say, yes, you've made a valid point. But I'm sticking with, if you can buy, buy. And, and then... Um, Kazim and I can have the the whole have a series on buy or not to buy. Uh, number yeah. Alfred Alfred Daisy. I don't know if you're familiar with. I always pronounce his last name wrong, so I'm just going to call him Alfred. But um, yeah. yeah, Alfred is also. He said he thinks it's a very interesting conversation um, in terms of rent versus buy, and he'd like to have maybe a group discussion. So I definitely yeah. think we'll get you involved. Get Alfred. If anybody else wants to get involved, drop me a message, and we'll yeah. discuss. You know, we might even do away from this, just do individuals, have individual takes, we'll mash them all together and we'll see who wins. But yeah. um, I think it's a good conversation to have. No doubt on it. Let's have a showdown. So um, just back to the point, um, Kazim, you've got to stop making such good points because I, I then forget Bro, my... This is how I win arguments. I just talk about other stuff. <laughs> It's just tangents. I'll just go off on a tangent, just take you down a merry road and you've forgotten what you were winning on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so <laughs> about my uh, the second strand of view from my window which is about mentorship so it's a different type of mentorship it's a mentorship that you only i only take people who are ready to go so i'm mm -hmm. not a training provider you're not going to get a big manual with loads of different strategies in from service to accommodation to rent to rent to this to that to the you know you're not going to get that with me i mentor people who are hungry they have sorted out their finance or they know who their investment partner is going to be or who they're JVing with. They are ready to go, but they don't want to do it alone. Because mm -hmm. you and I know property is a scary place. It is. If I didn't have Dolores, I, I, I don't know what I do sometimes. You need someone to bounce off of, get a sense of, is that good, that bad? And the amount of mistakes 
that you can make are they can be costly um and not just a little bit of cost they can be thousands of pounds and i know this why am i an expert on this because experts come from people who have made those mistakes right so when you make enough mistakes you then become an expert so i'm an expert at at finding loopholes now because i've made so many mistakes in the past and so people come to me because they don't want to make those mistakes they haven't got the time they haven't got the money they, they're a little bit nervous um and it's all a bit overwhelming so um they come on my one year's program and we literally take them from 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 a to b and it's all very bespoke because everybody's got a different journey you can either come on just to learn or you can come on to learn and earn invest in one of my pro uh, projects or you can learn earn and own which is the new um product that we're offering at the moment so that's the second strand of view for my window and the third one a leo Dong. it's a leo yeah i like i like a good acronym a leo sounds nice it's a Leo. And um, the third strand is, is simply, you know, landlords with a social conscience. We, we rent to uh, particularly young adults. I think young people have a really, really difficult time get owning anything and getting onto any kind of rental ladder. So we tend to, um, to rent to younger people who are uh, slightly disadvantaged um and to ordinary people who are disadvantaged as i alluded to before so that's the three strands i finally got that question answered yes i got told off who told me off i know it's gonna be one of your friends uh said let lorraine finish her sentence now so you're there you've done but now i'm back talking over her again so you're gonna have to comment and make sure i don't do it anymore um no that's amazing again like i said a lot of the stuff i don't always necessarily agree with stuff that i say I just say stuff because I think it will help the conversation flow and help to make sure that we do look at a sort of wide spectrum of opinions on any given topic that we're discussing. Um, so you mentioned you first went to auction in 2017. Um, and you had, I mean, the internet, everybody likes to hear a problem. So go on, tell us, what were the dramas with that first auction? Oh, well, the first, you know? we thought... All you had to do was to, th remember these are back in the days where you had to go into the room. So yeah, it wasn't yeah. often as it is now. And um, we thought we'd read the legal pack. Uh, mm. Well, you know, we even- Did you get I, independent to look over it? A friend, I got a friend. Okay. I said, I'll pay you some money just to have a little look at this. Cause I've, I've got loads of friends who have, have a legal mind. So I thought, right, okay, Do I'll just give job. it- Do on your network. <laughs> Yeah, and um, and then I thought, I've got everything covered. It's all good. What we didn't realise was those special conditions are, like... Which, which one got you? So, so, basically, on the day of the auction, we turned up, literally, with about sort of 15 minutes to spare, mm -hmm. rumbled around, and they, they always say, look at the auction pack, so they have them all out on yeah. the desk in front look at it just before you go into the auction and we didn't ha sort of have the time we just needed to find a seat and we wanted to coffee and all of this Addend addendum <laughs> yeah the addendum Ooh. Ooh. So it's stuck another 12 grand in like just you'll have to yeah. pay the you'll have to pay the sellers like what's it fees i can't even remember can you, what it was. can you explain an addendum for those that don't know because a lot of people obviously were talking right, so in jargon sometimes yeah an addendum is an addition to what's already in the pack, and they and it's an it's a legal document that they have to. Um, it, it's a formalisation to say something else has come in. There is something you need to know about this property, and it's normally around charges, and they add it and they call it an addendum. That's it in a uh, yeah. dummy's guide, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, basically, it's just a change. You okay. change something, it's in your face. You read it because yeah. you're responsible. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so the auctioneer normally announces, <clears throat> check the addendum to this lot, that lot, and what mm. not. So ours was lot number one. And um, there was an addendum. And we thought, oh, the addendum, we haven't even read that. Um, and of course, it was, uh, we would have to pay an, an extra £12,000 and I, I can't remember what it was. It was just the, something to do with the seller's, seller's premium. That's it. It was a seller's yeah. premium. 
and it's just so effectively now for those that are going to auctions yeah. just consider that pretty much everybody charges you the seller's premium now it's just standard procedure you're basically you're lucky and very lucky if they don't because it's become just standard so the auction is like any agent acting on behalf of the vendor would charge the vendor a privilege for selling the property generally speaking that like Lorraine mentioned around two percent so they now say that you know as part of the addendum or part of the special conditions to the sale the buyer will be responsible for the seller's fees. The buyer will also, a lot of the time now, be responsible for the seller's legal fees. There's, you know, there's, so basically now people that are putting properties in auctions are there on the basis, look, I want my net. So I don't, I want, I want my net to be my gross. So wherever I'm selling this property for, I want all the money and you just need to consider that. So if you are buying an auction, I would always bear in mind to stay under your maximum budget by about 3% for the additional fees. <laughs> And it's interesting that you mention a percentage because also attached to the special conditions was a little clause that said you will pay 5% on top of whatever the sale price is for this mm. property. And it was worded in a way that you just thought, oh, are they just asking for... 5% of maybe the auctioneer's fees. No, they were asking for 5% of the to whatever the property sold for, an extra 5%, will, the, the purchaser will be liable for this. Yeah. And, of course. And, and the thing that's even more, you know, important for you as a buyer is all of these special conditions and extra fees are not something that your, you know, your bridger is going to pay for or is going to come. They're going to come out of your cash pot. So... They're just like, you know, your stamp duty. That's money that you have to have on the day to pay to be able to complete. Exactly right. And the thing is, all of these additional charges. So we had in our head gone in there thinking that we're ready um, and we'd have maybe additional charges of, say, five grand. It, it mm -hmm. turned out to be 20 grand. And we this was our first time. 20 grand? We didn't have an additional two grand, let alone 20. And all of that, once the hammer went down, it was ours and we were like, yes. And, you know, we didn't go over. I mean, I think we, I think it was our first purchase was something like, um, if I remember rightly, it was something like 500,000. And that may mm -hmm. sound a lot, but we said we're not going to go over. I think our, we would get, our maximum would have been 502 or something like that. Yeah. And it was at 500. So we were okay. But then we had this extra 20,000 pounds. Can you imagine? And we were like, we never read that bit. And then yeah. from there, it all went so wrong in, in terms of the funding. And you touched on it, Kazim. The funding wouldn't allow that 20,000. So we had to yeah. find it, you know? And and at that stage, you just almost think, oh, what have I done? It's too late, yeah. can't come back, you know? And uh, so many other things. I mean, I could literally spend another 20 minutes talking about what went wrong, but let's, let's but keep let's move forward. But I think, up yeah, beat. when we talk about like auction purchases or just purchases in general, because I focus on flips as a developer, buying, yeah. adding value and selling, one thing I always say to people is that you make your money when you buy. So if you buy at the right price at the beginning, so let's say if you bought for 450, you'd be still just as annoyed that you've got an extra 20K worth of fees. Yeah. But you can, you know, you can take that loss. If your build is terrible and waste, you know, 5,000 pounds worth of your time and money, you can take that loss. So I always say to people, you know, in terms of sourcing a deal and how do you make a deal work? If you buy at the right price, that's where your profits are in buying at the right price. Um, but yeah, auctions definitely, like Lorraine touched on, read the small print, read the addendum, read the special conditions, get a professional to look over your auction pack to understand it because I think Ted's touched on this when he did one. Sometimes they'll write half the numbers in numbers and then write the other bit in text. You don't even realize there's an extra amount to pay. Exactly, and that's what caught out the 3%. Ours was fight you'll pay cent and the rest was in words. So you're absolutely right. Yeah. There are little things you do that can absolutely catch you out. And then it went on with, you know, you touched on it again. 
your builder, your builder going, I'll give you this price. And then all of a sudden, because they know it's your first, your first yeah. time, they go, oh, well, we thought we were clever. We went, well, we'll buy the materials because we thought we could manage this, you know, we could do it all ourselves. But actually what happened was we started to buy the materials and the builder, we, we, because half of the things I didn't know what was what, like he, yeah. he they send me to go and buy things from a plumbing shop that I had no idea about bends and folds and, you know, all of these things. And then, you know. He I, really did like PM properly PM this first project. No, honestly that's why everything was just so wrong because we decided that we were going to get into property we were in property now we were going to buy the materials ourselves he was sending us off to the shop to buy a whole load of things that we didn't actually and sorry forgive me any reputable con contractors and builders that are out there i'm going to say this with caution but this actually happened to me i don't mean to dish you but i'm going to tell you what happened to me he sent us off to the shop to buy loads of stuff that we didn't even need. I mean, the amount of plastering, I must have bought the amount of plastering to plaster Buckingham Palace. And it, this was like two little flats. And because we didn't know the qualities, <laughs> we were just doing what he told us. And he was then using that material and going off on other jobs. And we were like naively going, that was a lot of plastering, wasn't it? You know, it would turn up and we'd think, where is going to go? And it so must go somewhere let's, else. Let's talk about this, though, because a lot of people have the conversation that when they're starting their first project, whether it be just a refurb of a one-bedroom flat or something slightly yeah. larger like your project, there's always a trade-off from, do I get a big build firm in? Do I get a project manager? Do I get um, a, like, you know, a QS in to do my bill of materials? Like, you know, at how far do I go? And I think a lot of it for me comes down to where you want to go in property because if you know that you want to be in property for the long term, I feel like to a degree you have to have this baptism of fire that you had to understand. Yeah. You need yeah. to, like, even if you don't want to be on site, you don't want to project manage, you need to know it to a degree when somebody is taking the piss with ordering a ridiculous amount of plaster. You don't need to know exactly per square meter, how many bags of plaster does what. But within reason, you need to be able to look at something and say, I don't think this is right. Exactly. And you're, you you hit the nail on the head. Our reasoning for managing the, um, the, the materials was, A, we wanted to learn. Mm -hmm. B, um, to be honest with you, we wanted to start building reputation and... Um, a relationship with suppliers so like some of the big suppliers out there we thought well if we if we buy our own materials then we can set up an account under our company name yes. and we'll start building that that relationship so when we go in for things they'll go oh you know um oh we know her you know you're back again exactly back again and on all of this so we wanted to start doing that and if you if you really are serious about being in property, you do have to have relationships with suppliers, you know, because otherwise you're not really in property. Okay. You're in property, but from a distance. And we really wanted to be in it. Um, so God, as, a, as a mentor, <laughs> as a mentor, give us some tips. Give us some, like, you know, just little gems. Like, from that, for, what would you say from a somebody doing their first project, working with their first builder, could be good, could be bad. Again, had a load of good builders that I've spoke to as well. I've got a load of great tradesmen that I work with, but yeah. there are some bad tradesmen, just that, like there's some bad developers. Give us some sort of your go-tos. What would you do to sort of help to mitigate your risk? Right, so the thing about it is, you can take on what we try to do but have somebody who knows that can help you. And that is why a mentor is, and I'm not just saying this because I run a mentoring program, mm. but if I had somebody that I could go, can you just check these bricks for me and check mm. the, all this plaster and check all these screws and knobs and pipes and radiator valves, can you just have a little look? And it would have saved us thousands. Mm. It have saved us that so my thing is 
have somebody who knows who is in your corner. Because it wasn't until Dolores's brother came over and said, how much plaster did you buy? That we told him he was laughing at us. Because the yeah. bill... I think I would have, like, if somebody just told me they're doing, like, a two-bedroom flat and they'd ordered, like, <laughs> plaster to plaster, like, a ten-bedroom house, I think I'd laugh as well. Exactly. But we just didn't... <laughs> I mean, we made some silly mistakes because we just, we wanted to please the builder as well. So the other thing is that you want a really good relationship with your, with your builder mm. and you don't want to piss him off by going, no, I'm not buying that or no, I'm not buying that. So we were really naive and we just kept going, yes, yes, Hannah, we'll do that. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, I've said his name. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, yes, yes. And we just felt that we wanted to, keep the relationship with him but also not tease him off because he might not finish the job and, and this was too um the reason it cost so much money was because it was a, an ex-council uh, housing association mm. that we turned into two well it was already in two flats but we had to make them put them up to scratch Split and, properly yeah and so that's why but i mean you know there was a lot of money to be made in it because we sold them individually at really high prices near right near his current station but we lost so much money. I mean, Amit was, you know. Yeah. Uh, but do you know what? So, so for me, I think we're similar in that vein in that we're both what you would call like active learners. We learn yeah. by doing. We like to work with people. I think one, found, one thing that I found that worked really well for me is unlike you, I sort of would question everything. Not to the point where I'm questioning street, but like, I would talk as if I knew. Like, I would be the confident idiot. So, like, early on, like, when somebody was telling me, like, oh, yeah, we're just going to get this, you know, five, you know, uh, like, one, two, five, what, one, five, two RSJ across the top. And I would just look at them and say, do you think that's the best option? <laughs> <laughs> as if I knew so. <laughs> but just to kind of invoke a conversation. But I don't know. If there's anything else, let me know. And then I'll come back to you tomorrow. And I'll get on the Google if I, like you said, don't have the mentor or don't have somebody to, to talk to. Um, but yeah, you know, I think definitely asking a lot of questions. And this has been great. Do you know what? I think for those, because we've literally covered, like, well, I'm going to kind of out you now, Lorraine. You uh, sent me a very serious email before our meeting <laughs> with a list of bullet points. There was links. <laughs> There was numbers, there was a lot in the email that you sent me. And we haven't, we've probably covered 10% of this. So I am actually fully booked now for this is season two of Ask Someone Else. I'm on fully booked, your episode seven, we've got five more episodes left. But I think if you do, um, when this goes on YouTube or wherever it is, IGTV, when we put this out there, if you do want to see it and part two, make sure you put a comment there. And if you're happy to oblige, we'll get you back on. I think there's a lot more we can discuss. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff we've touched upon that I'd like to kind of like delve into a little bit more. Yeah, it's been it's been absolutely great. It's been really great talking to you. And you know, you're you're a great person to banter with because you know what you're talking about. <laughs> and you have a different opinion. And that's what property's about, right? Because there's more than one way to do to do something. So it's 100%. always because like, always even before personal. like I sound so formal. Off camera, Lorraine, off camera. We had a discussion and um, we were talking about the difference between new build versus sticking with smaller but multiple projects. And I think that's a really good conversation to have. I think build, uh, sorry, rent versus ownership is a great conversation. I think the philanthropist developer versus the capitalist developer, a great conversation. And I think there's so much that we can we can just discuss. There's another one that you missed, Kasim, actually, yeah. which is the... the the auction versus the um, the traditional estate agent. Because that's and that's, the, that's something I champion the tradition. Where are you? Which side do you sit on? Right. So ooh, ooh. because go. I I go to auction quite a lot. So auction was always my thing. But now I'm like, let's go back to the traditional building relationship with estate agents and getting them to offer you first what's out there. Because I'm finding that auctions, the premium, and people are paying silly money for things at auction. I literally always have an extra 
maybe 70 to 80,000 on top of what the um, guide is, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm finding that normally, ordinarily, a couple of years ago would have covered. You would have definitely, the hammer would have gone down and you would have secured it. Now, things I'm looking yeah. at are going for 200, 300,000 more than the guide. Hello? It's, 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 there's a lot of, there's a lot of, competition i think it always happens in times when you have what you call like funny money floating around people yeah. go back to bricks and mortar in times where there's uncertainty the prices are a little bit crazy especially with all of the c bills bounce back loans people that didn't have money before and now just saying look i've got money throw it into property so there's a lot of sort of it's a strange space we're in but i think even that the conversation between auctions versus traditional um, traditional methods like um, open market, Zoopla and right move versus yeah. sources is a yeah. great conversation to have. Um, before we do sort of close things off, I think, yeah, just in regards to one thing that I think we had a lot of questions about in the comment section that you can't see, yeah. but I can, um, is just about your mentorship. Right? If somebody wants to get involved, how can they find you? How can they reach out to you? Just remember as well, because this is going to be on places other than just Instagram, make sure you give the actual spelling of where they can find you or who they can email. Okay, so it's um, www.viewfrommywindow, all one word, .co.uk. If you go on there, you can, uh, you know, there's a, there's a 10 to 8, you can book some time with me or you can um, just send me a, a little message on there. Or I'm on Insta. Again, it's view from my window, but it's underscored. But if you just put in view, I, I tend to pop up. So uh, even if, I think even if you put Lorraine Thomas, we find you as well. You're, you know, yeah, you're yeah. High. Lorraine Thomas, you'll find me on Insta. And I'm on LinkedIn as well. I, I try to write a post every Wednesday on LinkedIn. So do, huh? do follow, do listen out, and do Jeez, have a read. So, social genius, just multiple, multiple platforms. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Now, it's been really good to have you on. This is actually... I don't know if people would believe it's, it's the first time we've spoken today because I feel like there was a real, a real chemistry. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to come down to one of your sites. I'm going to make the yeah. commitment to network with you, come and see yeah. what you're doing because you're just around the corner in Fort Heath and it looks yeah. like an amazing project on Instagram, but I want to see it live and direct. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to redirect people to your mentoring program. Excellent. If you just caught the end of this, it will be on Spotify, um, Apple Podcast, Amazon Podcast, you can catch up there. We're currently backdating, so we're actually only on season one. So if you want, there's also videos if you want to see it live. You can also see it on YouTube as well. So make sure you follow that. Property by Kazi, all one word on YouTube and Instagram if you're not already. Um, we're almost, like I said, we've been doing this now for 18 weeks. We've done 18 people back to back. There's 18 hours of great content for everybody to catch up on. Loads of free information from rent to rent to developments, from architects to lawyers. We've had them all on. They've all been giving us free information. Next week, we've got the ghost, the one who didn't appear, but we gave her a second chance because you guys said we should. It's Kelly Upstage. She's going to be talking all about the importance of um, like personal insurance whilst you're a developer, mm -hmm. looking at life insurance and various other covers you can have to protect yourself as well as her experiences in the property space. That'll be next Sunday, 6 p.m. Make sure you're locked in. Go follow Lorraine. She's been amazing. She's been a star. And if you want to see her again, make sure you comment when this video comes out. We want Lorraine and we'll get her back on. Oh, lovely. Thank you so much. And, um, you know, I'm following you, like, just looking. At, and I, I'm totally inspired by what you're doing. So you. mutual respect. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. And lastly, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. I know it's your Sunday. I know you're busy. So go and enjoy the rest of your day. We'll get you all back on very soon. Take care.